Jordan and Nate have now asked her uncle Joe Costa to share a reading. Yourself, but for what you are making of me. I love you for the part of me that you bring out. I love you for putting your hand into my deep deaf heart and passing over all the foolish, weak things that you can't help. Dimly seeing there and for drawing out into the light all the beautiful belongings that no one else had looked quite far enough to find. I love you because you are helping me to make of the lumber of my life not a tavern, but a temple. Out of the works of my every day, not a reproach, but a song. I love you because you have done more than any creed could have done to make me good and more than any fate could have done to make me happy. You have done it without a touch, without a word, without a sign. You have done it by being yourself. And next, a reading by Nate's friend, John Perry. From the Irrational Season by Madeline Lengel. <laughs> but ultimately there comes a time when a decision must be made. Ultimately two people who love each other must ask themselves how much they hope for as their love grows and deepens and how much risk they are willing to take. It is indeed a fearful gamble because it is the nature of love to create. A marriage itself is something which has to be created so that together we become a new creature. To marry is the biggest risk in human relations that a person can take. If we commit ourselves to one person for life, this is not, as many people think, a rejection of freedom. Rather, it demands the courage to move into all the risks of freedom and the risk of love which is permanent. Into that love which is not possession, but participation. It, is, it takes a lifetime to learn another person. When love is not possession, but participation, then it is part of the co-creation, which is our human calling. But this implies such risk that it is often rejected. The most of a 
marriage ceremony is the outward commitment of love and devotion that is proclaimed before a group of friends and family as we have gathered together here. At this time, we would like to acknowledge the friends and family who could not be here today to witness this meeting. Those who love do not go away, but they walk us out every day, unseen, unheard, but always near. At this time, we'd like to ask Dina and Thomas, Jordan's friend, to come read a reading. Hopefully. Three. 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 A lovely love story by Edmund Mark. The fierce Dying Thor was trapped inside his cage of ice. Although it was cold, he was happy in there. It was, after all, his cage. Then along came the lovely other Dying Thor. The lovely other dinosaur melted the dinosaur's cage with kind words and loving thoughts. I like this dinosaur, thought the lovely other dinosaur. Although he is fierce, he is also tender and he is funny. He's also quite clever, though I will not tell him this for now. I like this lovely other dinosaur, thought the dinosaur. She is beautiful, she is different, and she smells so nice. She is also a free spirit, which is a quality I much admire in a dinosaur. But he can be so distant and so peculiar at times, thought the lovely other dinosaur. He is also overly fond of things. Are all dinosaurs so overly fond of things? But her mind skips from here to there. So quickly, thought the dinosaur. She's also uncommonly keen on shopping. Are all lovely other dinosaurs so uncommonly keen on shopping? I will forgive his peculiarity and his concern for things, thought the lovely other dinosaur, for they are part of what makes him a richly charactered individual. I will forgive her skipping mine and her fondness for shopping, thought the dinosaur, for she fills our life with beautiful thoughts and wonderful surprises. Besides, I am not unkeen on shopping either. Now the dinosaur and the lovely other dinosaur are old. Look at them. Together they stand on the hill, telling each other stories and feeling the warmth of the sun on their backs. And that, my friends, is how it is with love. Let us all be dinosaurs and lovely other dinosaurs together. For the sun is warm and the world is a beautiful place. And finally, Nate's sister Rose will perform a reading. <clears throat> How falling in love is like owning a dog. First of all, it's a big responsibility, especially in a city like New York. So think long and hard before deciding on love. On the other hand, love gives you a sense of security. When you're walking down the street late at night, you have a leash on love. And no crook is gonna mess with you because crooks and muggers think love is unpredictable. Who knows what love could do on its own defense? On cold winter nights, love is warm. It lies between you and lives and breathes and makes funny noises. Love wakes you up all hours of the night with its needs. It needs to be fed so it will grow and stay healthy. But love doesn't like being left alone for long. But come home and love is always happy to see you. It may break a few things accidentally in its passion for life, but you can never be mad at love for long. Is love good all the time? No. Love can be bad. Bad love, bad. Very bad love. <laughs> love makes messes. Love leaves you lots of little surprises here and there. Love needs lots of cleaning up after. Sometimes you just want to get love fixed. Sometimes you want to roll up a piece of newspaper and swat love on the nose. Not so much to cause pain, but just to let love know, don't you ever do that again. Sometimes love just wants to go out for a nice long walk, because love loves exercise. It will run you around the block and leave you panting, breathless, pull you in different directions, at once or wind itself around and around you until you're all wound up and you cannot move. But love makes you meet people wherever you go. People who have nothing in common but love stop and talk to each other on the street. Throw things back away and love will bring them back again and again and again. But most of all, love needs love, lots of it. And in return, love loves you and never stops. And finally, Dennis will perform one last song, Always, by Irving Berlin. <laughs>
about. Nate, you take Jordan to be your wife, your partner in life, and your one true love. Will you cherish your union and love her more each day than you did the day before? Will you trust and respect her, laugh and cry with her, love her faithfully through the good times and the bad, regardless of the obstacles you may face together? Most importantly, will you promise to add at least an hour to the time she tells you she's going to be home? <laughs> will you let her nap and talk to the dog as much as she wants? Will you give her your hand, your heart, and your, and your love from this day forward as long as you both have it. Thank you. Jordan, you take Nate to be your husband, <laughs> your partner in life, and your one true love. Will you cherish your union and love him more and more each day than you did the day before? Will you trust and respect him, laugh and cry with him, love him faithfully through the good times and bad, regardless of the obstacles you face together? Will you tolerate the pounds of flour on the floor? Will you support his caffeine addiction? Will you give him your hand, your heart, and your love from this day forward as long as you both shall live? I do. At this time, can we have the rings? Nate, please place this ring on her finger and repeat after me. Jordan, I give you this ring. Jordan, I give you this ring. As a daily reminder of my love for you. As a daily reminder of my love for you. <laughs> Jordan, please repeat after me. Nate, I give you this ring. Nate, I give you this ring. As a daily reminder of my love for you. As a daily reminder of my love for you. You have made your marriage vows to one another, witnessed by your friends and your family. You have sealed your vows with the giving and receiving of these rings. So now, by the power vested in me, I pronounce you husband and wife, and invite you to kiss one another. <laughs>